In this portion of the FXDM educational video series, we're going to take a closer look at correlation and how this may actually interfere with the goals of consistency that we've talked about in position sizing. So here's basically what we mean, and this is a problem in the Forex where sometimes currency pairs can become quite correlated. And where this problem is more pronounced is when we have a situation like this. So imagine, for example, that a trader has three trades in their portfolio, one's on the pound, the other one's on the euro, and then they're also trading the Swissy. Well, you'll notice here that in this case, we have the dollar on the quote side of both of these two pairs, and it's on the base side of this particular pair. So let's say hypothetically that this trader was long the pound, they're long the euro, and they're short the franc. Well, in a situation like that, if something happens that directly affects the value of the dollar, then each one of these trades will either all go well, or likely will all go well, or they would likely all go bad if the, whatever happened on the dollar was against them. So let's say, for example, if they were long the pound and the euro, and something particularly positive happened uh, that affected the dollar directly, well, both of these two pairs are likely to go the same direction and against them to the downside, and this one that they're short on the Swissy is likely to go up, so they would lose on all three positions because they would start to act like a single trade. That becomes a bit of a problem. Now, alternatively, let's imagine that a trader is thinking about that correlation problem. So yeah, on a short-term basis, as well as potentially on a longer-term basis, they're trying to avoid that problem of overlapping currencies. Now, I use the dollar over here, but we could substitute the dollar for any particular currency that's on either side of the equation here. And in this example, the trader, they are long the euro to the US dollar. They're also, let's say, short the pound yen, and uh, maybe they're also long the Aussie to the Swiss franc. Well, in each one of these cases, there is an overlap between any of these currencies on either the quote or the base currency side. So while this may be impractical to do all of the time, this is an example of how an investor may look and set their expectations as to when they would expect to see a trades that are relatively uncorrelated going and moving independently versus trades that are more likely to move the same direction or are a mirror image of each other because something dramatic has happened to the currency that's involved in each one of these pairs versus these that are likely to move much more independently. Now, what we're trying to accomplish with something like this is to make sure that the trader has some diversification value. Therefore, they don't have a single event that winds up combining all of these trades to act as a, a virtually three times the size of a normal position, so just a big lumped up trade there. This way, they're able to reduce the risk of that potentially happening to them, and in overall, they're able to harvest some of that diversification benefit.